is Jay, welcome back to my tech vault, and today we're going to be making a very special IO shield. So IO shields are that lovely piece of metal that goes in between you and your finger when you cut your finger really bad when you're putting it in. Also on the side minor note, it also is important between going between your motherboard and your case, but for the most part, it cuts your finger. It's sharper than a lot of uh, few game weapons. They, they definitely argue this one. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an RGB one that does not cut your finger and actually is pretty nice. So this video is not just going to be for RGB though. If you wanted to replace a broken, damaged, etc. IO shield, then this would also be a great video for you. And additionally, if you wanted to make one that re was a certain color, maybe a blue, green, pink, who cares? You can also 3D print or watch this video to figure out how to do that as well. I'm also going to be posting and providing all my, I guess, models and stuff so you can go through and do this and replicate this yourself. So please feel free to look down in the comments and take my models to kind of free use. So that's also been, I guess, another purpose of this video. But I'm going to show you kind of the whole process. Now also, you're going to be thinking, oh no, 3D printing, I don't have a 3D printer. Well, this video does mainly rely on that. We've got some additional parts that you need to buy, but this really does not cost more than, I'd say 15 to maybe even less than 10, seven bucks maybe is what this whole video costs. So really, you could probably make about seven or six of them, probably for around 15 bucks. So you could make a bunch of different colors and a clear one, an RGB one, etc. You don't need a 3D printer because there are a lot of online services that let you print anyway. So really in this video, you can learn how to make something really cool, design it, do the whole process, send it off to be 3D printed and get yourself a really nice IO shield. So a couple of reasons why you should do this, simply just because it's RGB. I'm going to be focusing on the RGB aspect of mine because I really want to do something that hasn't been done before. Yes, people 3D print IO shields. I think it's been something that's done before. Uh, but for me, it was really important that it had to be RGB because I wanted to challenge myself to make something that was actual, an actual product that I think is really cool. And you know, if someone else, well, some big company likes to go through and sell some RGB IO shields, I want that profit, you know? So today's video is going to be me basically doing a bunch of work trying to make a bunch of different versions of a IO shield. And for the most part, I've settled on a really, really good model that I'm really proud of. So that will what we'll be using today and showing you kind of my process. So the RGB lights you'll need to get are probably around what, 10 bucks, nine bucks, but it's a set of three, so you get three little strips. You only get one controller though, so keep that in mind that you probably might need to spend a little bit more on some additional controllers if you're making multiple. Also, make sure you get some clear filament or the thing that you 3D print with. That's important because the light needs to go through it. And also, you'll need some kind of model, which I've already provided, to make your life a lot easier in reproducing this. So, I just wanted to first do is go through and add a little bit of connecting pieces in between, I guess you would say, the USB ports. Uh, I also decided to cut a few holes to make them a little bit larger. That way, there was pretty much no issue with clearance. I was a little concerned that, for example, something wouldn't fit. So I pretty much just made a couple little bit of cutouts and then added a little bit more of those connectors in between the USBs. This basically makes it a little bit more stronger. Honestly, when you start getting the very thin pieces of 3D printed material, it will end up having some issues if you don't uh, connect it as much as possible. So that's what I did. That's why I think it looks pretty good. So here's the plan. Um, we've got the IO shield. I've actually gone through and made it really, really tight and close. So it looks like exactly what you'd expect for the IO shield of what I've got here. Um, next up, um, I've made this little lip right here. This little lip is just so we can put the RGB lights on it. It's actually on the inside of where the case will be because uh, this is what's facing towards the motherboard, directly touching the motherboard. So since there was a little room up here, I figured we'd put um, a little lip and then we'd also add a bunch of RGB lights in so that way we could do it that way. So now it's time to print, and I pretty much just grabbed some of the clear 3D printing filament that I got. I bought it off of like Amazon or something. I got a really big roll. So one of the great things about this though is I ended up actually printing a little bit of a spool for it. The uh, Frankenbox, I think 800 FX 800 or something that I got, uh, is really odd because of the shape of the spool, where you put the spool is very specific to a certain shape. So I modified it a little bit and uh, pretty much that's actually worked out really nice. So when I did this I had to do a couple iterations, I actually had to print those multiple times, tweak it, change it, um, and so I grabbed some of this 3D printing filament that I had, uh, bought it off the line, I think this was like 10 bucks, or I think it was like 15 for this big roll right here, and uh, pretty much got it all set up and printing. So, so the next thing I had to do was actually the way that I printed it is so that it has supports so this basically is just because the IO shield is actually rather large as you can see here 
But the IO shield is actually rather large, so I can't just print it flat. I had to print it vertically, and that means that in order for it to get the right shape, it has to print these things uh, supports. And so they actually have to be removed at the end, so I pretty much just go through and tear them off, and uh, I guess sand down the areas and trim off the areas that have some excess. And then you have actually a regular IO shield. And this pretty much just has to be done just because of the size restriction. If you were doing this on your own, you wouldn't have to. It would just be whatever, if you printed it flat, it would print flat. So this is the motherboard from the Wish.com graphics card fiasco. Pretty much got cooked because of a graphics card I bought off there. But just to keep in mind, I had originally started this project before I actually did this video, or that video, so we're going to finish it up and at least give it an IO shield before I throw it away because it's done. Um, let me just see if I can get this on there real quick. And I also want to test this on. Let's turn on some RGB or turn plug in the lights real quick. So I also have this hooked up to a USB controller. So instead of it being a regular computer, just because I can't turn this one on because I don't trust it, it really does not work too well. But let me turn off the lights real quick. And as you can see, it looks it looks pretty good. I think actually I might go through though and get a little bit longer strip. The way that I cut this one uh, is a little doesn't have enough LEDs to cover that last little bit where the audio jacks are. So I'll probably go through and expand that by just getting a different strip and cutting it a little bit farther down the line. That way you get lights across the whole top. And as you can see, this looks substantially better. Welcome back. So in the last, I don't know, day, two days, it's taken a while for this video. So a lot longer than I thought it would be. Um, I've had to do a lot of experimenting and testing, so we've got ourselves pretty much the fair share of things to test with. Um, so first off, there's a couple things I want to point out. Uh, a couple times the 3D printer just like kind of, I think the filament got caught and it just kind of turned into almost, I don't know, not really something I want to put in a computer. Um, and then we had some other times where it just kind of like stopped or died halfway through and just stopped printing. So uh, there's been a couple attempts on this. And this video is taking a lot longer than I thought, so I'd at least appreciate a like. But let's show you a little bit more about what this thing can do. So this right now is hooked up to a USB RGB controller just because for the fact that this, this is my test system and my test system, if you're unfamiliar, got cooked by a graphics card from Wish. And by cooked, I mean I'm, I, I'm, I don't trust it running at all. So this thing is cooked. So that's, if you guys can get, bear with me for a second just because of that, then you can appreciate the RGB from an IO shield. So let's talk about a couple things. First off, you wanna replicate this. You wanna do this yourself. I'll be posting my information, my specs, and all the, uh, I guess the CAD model and stuff down in the description. So you can go through and grab it and that shouldn't be a problem for you. You can grab it. Um, obviously you have to customize it based off of what you have or what your, uh, I guess, motherboard supports. So if you're trying to download the one that I have, I'm not going to put that up there. I'll probably just put a blank one. You can either do two things. You can go through and download it, modify it to what you need, put a picture on it, and then just kind of cut out what, cut out the spaces that you think where your USBs are going to be. And then also, if you really want to replicate this and you don't have a 3D printer, you can always use one of the online services that allow you to 3D print stuff. It's literally like you send them a the file, you get wait like a week or two, and then you get something in the mail that's literally what you asked to be 3D printed. And so... And that's one way to do it. Also, you could just have it pretty much a blank IO shield with all the internals, I guess, covered, uh, or a, just a really blank IO shield, and you can pretty much drill it out if you want to do it that way as well. Just make sure whenever you ask to have it printed that you have 100% thickness, or not 100% thickness, 100% density, I think it's called, that you have this so it's 100% solid. Otherwise, you might just end up snapping it or having a really big mess. Those are just some things to keep in mind. So what do I like about this? Well, first off, design choices. I ended up actually modifying a few things. So first off, there were some minor differences in the distances between some of these uh, parts. You had to slightly move some stuff over and slightly move some stuff back. So that's what you're looking at there. Also, this thing, <laughs> this little, I don't know, the holder piece for it or the plastic that holds the RGB on there is really thin on some of the earlier models. So what I did is I ended up thickening that and also kind of making it a little bit longer as well so it would support a little bit more RGBs. And then I also had chose to stop it right before the tall uh, audio port so that way you could wrap the light up around and get full coverage across the top. I actually think it turned out extremely well and I'm really proud with how it looks. 
I think everyone can appreciate that as well and you can easily replicate this. Just ask um, or just download the file, send it to pay like five bucks or six bucks maybe and have someone 3D print it for you. It's clear, uh, you can get, just make sure you get the clear filament and that's pretty much it. You have yourself an RGB IO shield. Also the RGB lights themselves, it's from an old strip uh, a kit that I had and it's really, you simply just cut it, cut it to the length you need these, I think this was like seven bucks or something for the like three strips. So you can really just make a few with it. Um, just cut them, tape them across uh, on this little top piece right here. Obviously you may end up having your audio ports or some taller IO. So you may have to compensate for that. So for example, if you have, you know, some really tall IO, you're not going to be able to fit your RGB lights on the top here. So you may have to move this around or just stop this little support bracket so you can wrap it around as well. For the most part, this top place should be pretty clear on most motherboards. So it's another thing to keep in mind. So this video took a pretty, pretty long time, a lot of actually work and time to get this thing to 3D print right, and also do a little bit more of the research on how to get things. So it would actually be pretty sturdy. Well, and this is the earlier models for that reason. Another thing, before I forget, I actually ended up thickening this uh, little round area here as well, because as you can tell, it's pretty easy just to snap as you just saw. So. I think we all can agree there. The thicker, the better. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. Thank you guys very much for watching. We're going to also, just a little sneak peek on the next video, um, there's this Tesla Cybertruck graphics card that's 3D printing. It will be 3D printing at the moment I get done with this video. So if you want to subscribe for that or check that out, that should be out as well. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I gotta get working on that, but it's already designed and modeled, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Have a good day.